Welcome to this first video of my Jakarta EE CRUD API tutorial. In this first introduction video, I will give you an overview about the project I will use during the tutorial and show you everything you need for the setup. So the project is a basic Jakarta EE8 application um, running with Java 11 and deployed to Open Liberty. For the dependencies, um, Next to the Jakarta EE specification API, I've included Flyway to later on migrate um, a basic uh, database schema to the Derby database. Alongside Flyway, I've also included um, MicroShed testing and the JUnit Jupyter dependencies. So we will use these to develop this CRUD API in a test-driven development manner. And for this MicroShed testing is quite helpful. In addition to this, there's also the Liberty Maven plugin included inside this project. So we will launch the Liberty server within development mode. We will use this Liberty Maven plugin to enhance the TDD experience as we can either execute the tests on each change or whenever we hit enter, which you will later see. And that's it for the Maven project setup. Um, let's have a look at how the Open Liberty server is configured. So the features which are included are CDI, JPA, JAXRS and EJB. And for the database, I've decided to pick a embedded uh, Derby database. So the Derby jar file is also included within this folder and is uh, picked up during the deployment. And we will create a new database um, uh, with the name test. Furthermore, if you use Flyway together with Open Liberty or WebSphere Liberty, you have to add a flyway.location empty file to the folder of your Flyway migration scripts. So within here, I've put them into resources and then the DB migration folder. And here's the first basic DDL script. So it's rather basic uh, table, which uh, represents a person is has an ID, which is the primary key and the first and the last name. For the persistence XML, there's nothing special configured. Um, I'm creating one persistence unit and this will then use the default data source, which we configured in the server XML. So if you specify the default data source within here, you don't have to configure any JNDI name in your persistence XML. The beans XML is also quite uh, normal. So the bean discovery mode is um, all. And to deploy the application to the root context, I've added a additional file, IBM web extension XML. And here I specify um, that the application should be deployed under the root context. For the existing source code, there is a Simple EJB, which is uh, triggered on startup and which will do the flyway magic in the background. So this injects the, the main data source. And once this once the application server starts, it will migrate the schema, if not already applied to the database. And this will be done on each application startup. Note that you will need here the transaction management of type bean. So here you can't uh, use the transaction management of the application server because Flyway internally um, will make sure to commit and roll back the transaction if required. This is the JOXRS configuration. So basic configuration and everything will be underneath the resource path. I've also already modeled the simple entity here, so we will have this primary key and two columns, which are both not nullable. And the person resource is now empty. And the further tutorials, we will include each mappings to create persons, update persons, delete persons, and read persons. And now let's switch to the tests. So here I've already configured um, the application container, which we need later on to write the integration tests with MicroShed testing. And there's also already a integration test in place, which right now does nothing. It's a, a raw container for us to later on 
develop this API in a test-driven development manner. And what we can now do is start the Liberty server in development mode to show that it's running. And here in the logs you see on each deployment of the application, we will check if there is a new schema available, which has to be migrated to our Derby database. And once this is successful, we'll print out this line here. So the server is now up and running. And whenever I hit enter, it will execute the test cases. So right now there are none, but we will write them later on and use this technique to verify once uh, our tests are in place that the actual implementation uh, fits to our test cases. That's everything I wanted to share with you for the project setup for this small Jakarta EE CRUD API tutorial. See you in the next video.